Being here is a blast. Uh, it's given me a chance to meet a lot of people and really connect and uh, try to see how they do this lifestyle. So, uh, yeah, I'm really stoked about it. It's been a blast. Basically, it's unlimited tropical fruit, so you can eat as much as you want. Whatever you want to eat, if you want to eat at four in the morning, if you want to eat at night, so whenever suits you. So that's kind of part of the ethos of the festival is that, you know, it's unlimited fruit and um, lots of different varieties, lots of organic produce as well. The Woodstock Fruit Festival was my dream of bringing together people who believe in a fruit and vegetable based diet, a diet that's comprised of nothing but raw fruits and vegetables. Last year we had about 200 people, this year I think we're at 400, maybe 450, so it's uh, twice as many people, so probably twice as much fruit. All right everybody, welcome to the 2012 Woodstock Fruit Festival. The concept of a raw fruit and vegetable diet, fruitarianism or you know, raw veganism, isn't something that's, that's new or just started five years ago. There, there are people here that we call pioneers that have been doing this for, for literally decades. These are people that were doing something that was really well, well beyond their time. And here we are now to show them, say, hey, because of you, because you listen to your instincts, you have shown us a wonderful lifestyle and a wonderful, you know, sustainable diet, and we want to celebrate that. And we also want you to teach us, show us and prove to us that this is the best diet for humanity. I want to thank you for making this trip. And whether you realize it or not, your attendance at this festival has a larger purpose and benefit than for yourself. By being here together, we are building a large snowball you can be a lighthouse to others who still struggle in finding better health. My name is Ashley Clark and I'm from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I came to the Woodstock Fruit Festival to, um, to learn about this lifestyle. I'm quite new to it. I've only been eating this way for four months, but in the four months, I've seen great results. Like. Um, better hair, skin, nails, better digestion, uh, more energy, clarity of mind, and and I'm only in it four months. I've only been in it four months, so I'm pretty stoked about where I'm going to be in a year from now or ten years from now. Hey guys, this is Trent Brocky. I'm 21 years old, live in Orlando, Florida. I just came up here to the Woodstock Fruit Festival to um, meet up with like-minded people and learn more about the raw food lifestyle. Everyone you meet that's like extremely healthy, I get information from them. Um, Dr. Douglas Graham has his classes. There's like uh, Dan McDonald's here giving his lectures. There's just a multitude of people that you can gather all this information and uh, improve your health. Hold, hold, hold! I know 
Ai, que durinho! Puta fora! Doug Graham, he's somebody that's, he's gonna go down in the history books. This, this man have really is somebody special. He's a selfless, selfless individual. He believes strongly in what is important in life. And that is spreading the message that we need to change how we eat. And he's dedicated his entire life to that one singular goal. Back to the wall. So let's do a wheelbarrow, one man. The one man will bow. How come I'm the only one going? <laughs> Wait a minute, safe. this class is for you, not for me. Everybody against the wall. All at once. For my own personal progression, I, I really went a long roundabout route in dietary modification starting from eating pretty much the same way as everybody else in America eats. Pretty much thinking I was eating a healthy diet, as almost everyone does. I adopted vegetarianism and then started hearing about veganism and then raw foods and decided to experiment some with the raw food diet. And I didn't understand the science that supported raw foods at the time. It just seemed like the right thing to do, perhaps, or at least experiment and see how I like to eat. You know, everybody says, eat more fruits and vegetables. And I'm thinking, well, gee, what would happen if I actually, instead of just said, eat more fruits and vegetables, what would happen if I actually did eat more fruits and vegetables? So I just started experimenting with that. And, and I loved the results. The sports scientists clearly demonstrated that the uptake of oxygen and glucose, fuel for our cells, the uptake, transport, and delivery of these two items was enhanced when the amount of fat in the diet was reduced. I took that information and said, gee, I wonder what would happen if we did that as raw food vegans. Athletes went nuts. PRs became the norm. Uh, personal bests became the norm. We haven't even yet explored the range of how long do we extend athletic careers. I mean, I'm still performing reasonably well at 59. I've got lots of top-notch athletes in their 40s who are still competing against kids internationally and winning against kids who are in their 20s. Uh, and so we don't really know what kind of an extension has actually occurred because we haven't hit the end of it yet. Three, Come on. four, yeah. five, very good, very good. I'll be lifting and people come up to me, they're like, I bet you got a lot of, pro you know, eat a lot of protein, you must eat a lot of red meat. You know, I tell them I'm gonna go, I'm training for a powerlifting competition, they're like, well, you know, are, are you eating a lot of meat and stuff? No, I'm like, I'm eating fruits and vegetables, and they're like, oh, you mean you add protein supplements here? I'm like, no. If we could demonstrate that you could have strength on this diet, because that's the number one reason people will never go on this diet because they think they're gonna lose all their strength because they're not getting enough protein or whatever. So if they can do this, then it proves it. Planning to feed 400 people is absolutely crazy. You you can't really. I, I don't think you can really like plan properly for it until you've done it. And the first night that we got in here, we really learned like 
okay, now we get how much we need to make. We see how much everyone's eating, and these people are hungry people. <laughs> so we just really have to just crank it out and just over prepare, and then we kind of like hit it perfectly. <laughs> been interested in raw eating for uh, on and off for a while. I've never really seemed to make it work, uh, you know, on again, off again. I got uh, Doug Graham's book, uh, 801010, about six months ago, and it kind of rang a bell with me, and I thought, you know, I need, really need to go and hear him speak and stuff, and I did, and that's, that's basically why I came. And, uh, I, you know, it's been more than I imagined it would be. It's, I'm really blown away by by Dr. Graham, his his uh, his abilities in terms of exercise, um, his knowledge in terms of you know physical anatomy, medical health stuff. I mean, it's just it's really it's knocking me out. What brings me here is uh, well, about five years ago, I had a heart attack uh, being a cross country truck driver with nothing but fast food to eat, no exercise, and just an all around bad way of life. I'm looking for something better, so I. My sister started this lifestyle about six years ago, so she started talking to me about it. And so far, I'm not displeased with it. I'm liking the results. Uh, it is just an all around, I didn't know that there was a, a community of people that would actually partake in something like this yearly. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. I've had a great time so far. It's, it's turning into what we were dreaming about right now. You know, just everybody together nobody in judgment and just people happy to, to be eating natural foods and it's kind of a dream come true so I'm, I'm pumped. A lot of the people that came here we really didn't know much about them you know we, we kind of opened our arms to anybody who was interested to come to the festival and, and I am surprised and, and, and really encouraged by how many people have come to kind of try out a fruit-based diet. And, and, and the response has been they're really excited and, and they, they, they feel like this, this is a big turning point in their life and how they eat. And that's, that's super successful to hear, so I'm, I'm pumped. See you later. <laughs>16, 17 years of my life, I had terrible sinus conditions, asthma, depression, high blood pressure, just not a happy childhood. Going from that to a fruit and vegetable based diet, it was just kind of like, you know, like reading on the internet of like, oh man, people can actually live on raw foods, just fruits and vegetables, and I just thought that was the craziest thing, and so I just had to find out what that was about. And the weight just started coming off effortlessly as I was pretty much you know, eating as much food as I possibly could get a hold of. Just changed the foods that I was eating. From there, it was just kind of a steady, you know, feeling better and better almost every single day. My digestion, the way I felt and the way I looked, like I actually wanted to go outside and do something. Whereas before, you know, it was hard to get me off the couch to quit playing Xbox. My goal is to really just try to inspire people to lead the healthy lifestyle that everyone wants to really live. And I'm not trying to get people, you know, tell, tell them what to think. I'm just trying to get people to think and inspire them to really, you know, take astonishingly good care of themselves and get the amazing results that they would get from doing so. At the very beginning, when you first start changing your diet, you know, you kind of, it's a small town in the Midwestern United States and everybody knows everything about everyone. And they're just notorious for that, and gossip is just horrendous. But, you know, so I was kind of known as that, you know, that guy that doesn't eat any meat or steak or, you know, cheesecake or whatever. And so I kind of had that connotation about me by the people that knew me before. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's just like people couldn't argue with how good I felt. You know, I just, I was losing the weight effortlessly. My skin was glowing. My hair was growing strong. And I was just feeling absolutely fantastic. So I went from being the crazy banana dude to, the healthy, happy banana tears. <laughs>
Chris Randall is another incredible person. He, he also came from the other end of the spectrum where he was, he was at a dead end, rock bottom, a young guy, severely overweight, depression. I mean, you name the problem, he had it. And now I look at him, it's like, it's like I'm watching, you know, Moses come off the, the mountain with the Ten Commandments. I mean, he's just glowing. You know, he's got long, beautiful hair and he's happy and he's confident and he's alive. And, and, and these are the transformations of, of that, that you just see in movies. And, and it's happening real time to, to so many people. Uh, this diet is just the most natural diet for our bodies. It's a diet that aids us not only in recovery, in our health recovery, physical recovery, it aids us in our emotional, mental and spiritual recovery as well. I was dealing with a pretty severe case of acne, as well as some other health problems like depression and ADHD and anxiety and whatnot. And I've noticed that most of those have pretty much disappeared over the last eight months. I've been on a fruit-based diet for about a year and a half now. Um, before that, I was a vegan for six years, and it's really improved my health quite a lot. I used to suffer with um, IBS and UTIs and depression, acne, fatigue, just completely bedridden, and I couldn't go to school. So, um, yeah, and now I'm, I'm super happy and active all the time, running around everywhere and just having fun. All right, so the diets I've tried has been Atkins, Weight Watchers, Paleo, carb cycling, low carb, calorie restriction, um, cabbage diet, steak and potato diet, um, slim fast, um, protein shake diet, uh, Nutrisystem, <laughs> um, and they all obviously didn't work. What's different about now is it's easy. I'm eating fruits and I'm eating vegetables. Um, in two years, I would like to lose 400 pounds and be weighing in at 217 pounds. Richard Whitmark, wow, this guy is impressive. He has such courage to come to this event when he's coming from the complete other spectrum of the problem. And he's facing this issue head on. And, and, and he's doing it in full public. I really respect him, really commend him. I'm very excited for him. And I, I think he's gonna really make some waves for himself and for a lot of people. I started looking around to what was the best diet on earth. And you know, automatically you think like athletes, you know, pro athletes, you know, NFL, NBA, because these guys are fit on the outside. They're really fit. And then you look into what they're doing, they're, you know, and they're taking a lot of supplements, they're taking performance enhancing drugs to get where they're at. And so I kept doing research and I found Mike Arnstein. And I found like this guy runs 100 miles eating nothing but fruits and vegetables. It blew my mind that somebody could run 100 miles only eating fruits and vegetables. Like it doesn't make sense. All right, this is Woodstock Fruit Festival and we have diversity here. We got runners, we got bikers, we got swimmers. So today we're doing the Woodstock Fruit Festival Triathlon. All right guys, have a good swim. Get ready, get set, go! I think my life was very similar to how most uh, weekend warrior athletes' lives were. They, they, they read the magazines about eating healthy, they, they read about how to work out better and, and make improvements in their life. And these things were generally you know, small changes in nature where I would, I would cut out red meat, I'd, I'd, I'd shun the french fries most of the time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for the cream cheese, I'd go for the jelly. And, and you know, I, I did okay, I was, I was okay, you know, and I, I thought it was normal and I thought I, I ate pretty healthy until I learned about a fruit-based diet. Michael's wife had read my book. I don't know where she got it, but she read the book. She thought it would be perfect for Michael more than for herself. And, and I told her that she, I couldn't learn anything else about diet, but she said, Michael, you must read this because you don't know everything about diet. 
Michael did the experiment. He tried the diet basically the way it was laid out in the book. He just said, let's see what happens. He watched his marathon time just plummet. And he was shocked, literally shocked, and, and didn't look back. He started running marathons on Saturday, winning, and then running marathons on Sunday, and winning. And said, you know what, I wanna try longer races, and went to double marathons, and triple marathons, and quadruple marathons. For some people who don't know what an ultra marathon is, it's basically taking your body past the limits of what your mind believes it can do. So for most people, that's more than a marathon. Most people would never consider running more than a marathon. That's the ultimate challenge. How could you go beyond that? And then there's some people that figure 50 miles is the furthest you can go. And, and now I've run 100 mile races. I've run races that are 135 mile races. I've run for more than 24 hours without stopping. I've run for more than 30 hours without stopping. I don't put limits on what's possible anymore. The ultra events really caught his attention. He's running 100 mile races. Uh, you know, you start running 100 mile races in, in a work day, right? He's doing it in sub 20 hours and, and the next day running a marathon. I just went full force overnight and it's been almost five years and it's, it's changed everything in me and about me as a person. A lot of people look at my diet and they say, oh, this guy is really extreme. And, 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 they, and, they, and they further confirm that their feelings about that when they see what I do athletically. I, I've done some things that I would consider are very unhealthy athletically. I mean, running for 24 hours is not inherently good for your body. Um, I think a, a lot of what I do athletically these days, whether it's run 100 miles or 135 miles or, or, or run, you know, many hundreds of miles in a very short period of time in, in a few days is is more about me trying to show others that if there was a deficiency in my body in how I'm eating after nearly five years that pushing myself so far beyond anybody's conceived limits of of, of what's possible is proof that you might not agree with my diet being socially acceptable or, or, or that it's something that is, 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 is ideal in certain situations, but nobody can challenge that my diet is not healthy. Tomato. Oh, for me? Uh, mm. As a, any parent, you have fears. You wanna do what's best for your children. And we weren't certain, you know, we had some fears about because it's like we're breaking new ground here especially with the children. And Allison, was, she, she ate meat because uh, we were not on a vegan diet when she was born. And so she ate meat maybe for a year. Henry never has. And they have both been very close to a raw vegan for maybe four years. And uh, everything we checked with the doctors and everything, their health is really good. As far as physically, they're extraordinary and uh, they're very bright. I think a lot of people that see the kids and, and they wonder, you know, is it okay to just feed a child, a growing child, raw fruits and vegetables? I mean, can they really sustain themselves on that? And the answer is yes. Is, is, it, is it easy to do in our society? No. Are there people here that are extremely dedicated parents that where, where their children come first and foremost before anything else, where they make things that are inconvenient a reality because they want their child to have the best options. They don't want them to be indoctrinated into addictive foods and lifestyles that they, that they themselves grew up on. It's wonderful to see children that have been from birth all the way through early childhood at this point that have eaten nothing but raw fruits and vegetables and they are healthy, happy, and well-adjusted. 
it's just been a really pleasurable experience because I think really the bottom line, what every parent wants is a happy and healthy child. And every parent does what they feel is best at that time with the knowledge they have and with the decisions they've made to raise happy and healthy children. And both my children have been very, very happy and healthy on a fruit-based diet. And obviously milk's very important. I think this is a very important thing for raw vegan children. So both my children were long-term breastfed. My older boy for three and a half years and Cappy for four years. They've been happy, healthy, neither child has got any of the usual childhood illnesses such as measles, mumps, chicken pox, anything like that. Do you ever tell people that you eat fruit um, who don't already know and, and what, what do they say? Um, they don't really take it as unusual. Um, some people, I have next door neighbours and um, they know I'm on a fruitarian diet and yeah. You're just happy if people are open to your diet, but when they actually actively support it, it's, it's really, really heartwarming. And recently, Cappy went to a birthday party, one of his friends, and um, they made the whole party raw vegan, because Cappy was. So there's, there's very nice instances of people really supporting the diet, so that's, that's great. <laughs> there you go, Cap. Right, pull up. There we go, look at that. Again, Cappy, chin up, that's it. One more. Unreal, man. One more. You can do one more. Yes! Okay, down you come. Great. <laughs> okay, Kat. This type of uh, exercise, even hanging, is called brachiation. Brachiation. It's what our ancestors used to do in the tropical forest, stretching out our spines. And once you do the brachiation and you're able to get a good grip you can do the stretch through like this <laughs> see that looking around <laughs> yeah I'm coming down do the windmill and then slowly down it's a good stretch for the abdominal yeah. <laughs> it's not bad for a 68 year old. It's like, pretty good. <laughs> if you asked me what is the single best exercise that you can do, I would have to say that the handstand is the best single exercise if you took out all other exercises. The reason is that standing on your feet uses up a certain amount of oxygen and energy but standing on your hand uses up 33 times more oxygen than standing on your feet. So it's a confrontational type of exercise. So it's, it's uh, pushing your body to um, increase the oxygen into the upper part of the body, increase the uh, blood supply to the brain, and the elasticity of the muscles in the brain are thereby enhanced. So you're not gonna die of a stroke or whatever. Um, if you've been practicing handstands throughout your life. I'm about to give my first talk ever about my life um, and how I became 669 pounds and the transitions that it took for me to become a vegan and ultimate goal of becoming a raw vegan. It's really stressful for me to, to get up there and, and tell personal things that, that I don't even tell my best friends. When I was about 20 years old, I, uh, I met you know this girl and we became best of friends. It was the first person ever that I could just talk to on the phone for five hours straight and, and never run out of conversation. And uh, it, it, was, it was a lovely experience. I mean, everybody wants to fall in love with their best friend, and I did. And once it was known, once she made it known to one of my friends that she had feelings more for me than friendship, and I found out, you know, I asked her about it. And things changed really quick. She didn't want to talk about it. Um, and about a week went by, and finally, you know, we caught up to each other, and I asked her, you know, if she had feelings, you know, why was she not pursuing them with me, and, and you know, that I loved her. And she told me that because I was so big that she couldn't be with me. Um, 
she said her friends wouldn't be able to handle it. And uh, that, that was a pretty, pretty traumatic experience. Um, you know, that, that was my first true love. And, and, and to have that happen, it just, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's really deflating. I went and I, I bought a 38 revolver. I found a place down on the James River and I positioned my body to where when I pulled the trigger, I would fall into the river. And, uh, you know, that way hopefully my body would never be found. You know, my parents would think that I just left or, you know, somebody abducted me and, and, and nobody would know that I killed myself. Um, so I, I pulled the trigger and nothing happened. And I, I immediately just broke down into, into tears and, and just like all this emotion that I've been holding up for so many years just, just came flowing out of me. And I just, I couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger again. I knew like that was a sign that I'm still supposed to be here and that, that will never be me again. Like I, I want to live and, you know, being here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival is even showing me that more that, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I have people like this around me and, and, and it's, it's just love and so much love and so much support. There's no judgment here. It's just, it's like the best place in the world right now to me. <laughs> Welcome to the Raw Experience, the story of me, Richard Whitmark. My grandparents are both overweight. My parents are both overweight. My aunts and uncles are overweight. My entire family, I come from overweight. But a lot of the issues from childhood carry on throughout their entire life. And they have carried on through my entire life. So, about two years ago, I decided that it was time to make a change. I honestly, I felt like I was really inspired and proud of him. And I think that our community is very, very lucky to have him to be out there and so open to inspire other people to do it. Because I think a lot of people at his size, especially, like they don't think that they can do this. So to have him be there to be an example is amazing and his personality is just wonderful. So I just really thankful. Look at these suckers, huh? Woo! Oh, just, I think I gotta do a taste test, yeah. You gotta make sure, just quality control right here. <laughs> mm. yeah. All right, what are you guys making for the masses? We got a little bit of pad thai back here, Michael. Pad thai, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a coconut carrot celery pad thai with hints of daikon, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of leek. All right, we got Bruce Lee over here. That's taking care of business. That's the Thai The sauce will be mixed in there. Wow. She was chopping it all by herself. <laughs> you guys are doing fantastic. A lot of people can be uh, almost militantly against the idea of only eating raw fruits and vegetables. And and I can understand where they're coming from because on a on an emotional level, food is not just food, it's connected with how we interact with people. So when you go to your family's dinner for a holiday, it, it's not that you're just eating that particular food, it's, it's the whole process of how the food works within that, that culture. So if, if you're of Indian descent, you're, you're tied into things that have curry and that are made with milk, and, and you can't imagine not eating these things. It's, it's, it's ingrained in who you are as an identity, as a person. So to tell somebody who eats those types of foods every day that they can't have it anymore, it's like asking them to change their language, move to another country, another culture, another planet. It's so far beyond what they can conceive as normal that it threatens their own identity as a person. And that's why people get scared and they say, I could never do that. Last year, I personally started doing low-fat raw, 
and I've experienced such amazing results that I decided that I wanted to work with Doug and be a part of the spreading the raw message to people that are avoiding overt fats and really use their diet for the, all the health benefits that it can provide. And I think that gourmet raw food is a great vehicle to get people to realize that they can eat healthy with uh, and, and and really enjoy it. But once they've been on that gourmet raw vegan path, to get even cleaner by doing really high carb, low fat. We've created a low fat raw vegan uh, lasagna, thinly slicing zucchini. We put a little bit of marinade on that zucchini to soften it so that it will. And We've layered that with a spinach pesto, and that spinach pesto has a little bit of arugula, some chives. The second layer is a red pepper pesto, basil, oregano, parsley, a little bit of rosemary. The cauliflower breaks down and looks like a parmesan, and it has a little bit of shiitake powder, a little celery powder, and um, a little bit of lemon zest. So here's a finished lasagna. There's no dairy, there's no gluten, there's no additives or preservatives. It's all, 90% of it is just like fresh, high water content vegetables. People have been really, um, been surprised by the layers of flavor and um, how satisfying it is. Well, I think our goal should be seen. How can we influence the mainstream, you know, the people out there that are virtually habituated or addicted to the cooked food diet? You know, it used to be just 10% of the world had a problem, and now it's soon it's going to be 90% of the world. That's it, and the healthcare system is going to collapse as a consequence of it, you know, it just can't keep up, they can't keep building facilities to try and, you know. It is, it's collapsing now. It is. It's the same in Australia too. I mean, it's cold red time, you know? It's, it's just those people who we can influence to transition, and that's what I've noticed about this year. There's more people on the transitioning stage, and last year it was more hardcore fruitarians and that yeah. sort of thing, you know? We've got people here that are interested, yeah. and they're testing it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is good, that's what we need. I know for my family, when I first started eating raw, it was like they had their blinders on. It didn't matter what I did or how beautiful I looked or that I was gaining weight or that I stopped going to doctors. They thought what I was doing was insane, right? But it took them time. And so after a while of me just living as an example, they were able to slowly open their eyes and accept it. None of my friends were originally raw or vegan, but in learning how to consume more fruits, I grew a community around myself that appreciated such a thing. And now I'm surrounded with fruit lovers and veggie lovers, and some of them may not be 100%, some of them may striving to get there, and it doesn't really matter. As long as you have people who appreciate the good word, you know that it's spreading, and I think that's what matters. I come from a unique perspective in that I've seen a huge community flourish, especially in Houston. Um, I started Rawfully Organic just, you know, almost seven years ago, and it's, it's crazy. It went from seven people to over 7,000, you know, started in my living room, and now we have three locations in Houston with 13 different drop-offs, and so do I think the message is spreading? Absolutely. Um, do I think that we can do better? Absolutely. This festival is amazing because it accepts everyone. Nobody's perfect, nobody is gonna do the exact same diet day in and day out unless they're accustomed to do it. I think the more that we all come together, the more that we can see where each other is coming from. We can bring it back to wherever we come from and will allow us to touch more people in the end. 
right? Because people are here because they're inspired to be here. They want to learn. They want to know about the movement. They want to feel good. And believe it or not, but they want to take away something that they can bring home with them. And hopefully that thing will be something that they can share with the world. How many people here have run a 5K? Raise your hand. All right. So if anybody runs less than three miles, you're getting thrown out of here, right? <laughs> How many people here have run a half marathon? Raise your hands. All right. The people's hands didn't go up. Don't get scared. But seriously consider pushing yourself past what you've done before. This is not a race. This is a challenge for yourself. We've got an opportunity here to do a lot more than just change what you're thinking about and diet. You want to change what your perceived limitations are in your head about what you can do as a person. And running for longer than you want to, running longer than what's comfortable, is inherently good for you. It might break you down for a short period of time, but it's going to build you up. And everybody that finishes is getting an awesome award. You get to have coconuts or watermelon. All right? Let's go! Woo! I understand that most people consider this diet uh, as something that they, they're interested in. They, they, they understand the common sense logic behind it and, and, and they want to test it and experiment with it. And, and one thing that's been really encouraging is to see that there's a lot of people that have come to this event that are, you know, they're here to try it. You know, they're, they've got an open mind, they're interested, they think, you know, this is a different type of group of people, but they don't really think that they can do it. And, and, and what's so amazing is that I can't count how many people have come up to me and said, you know, I came here and I had pizza on Tuesday last week, and, and now I have opened my eyes to a reality that's so far beyond anything I could imagine. And I still want to eat pizza, but I really know that that's not what I, I should be doing. And, and this event is, is, a, is incredibly life-changing. There's a lot of people here that aren't just eating raw fruits and vegetables. But I can say there's almost nobody here that's not going home thinking, that's how I want to eat. And about six months ago or so, I looked on the Woodstock Fruit Festival website, saw all the pictures of, of all the activities and, and all the fruits and vegetables people were eating. And I, I told my wife that it's like, oh my God, we just have to be there next year. It looked so cool. And having been here this year, I can say that <laughs> we're sure glad we came. It was, it was just incredible. Uh, meeting all these like-minded people, having all these fun activities, going in the water, going kayaking, running with a bunch of people, and just being around 
so many other people that are leading this lifestyle, eating a raw fruit and vegetable diet. I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years and teach, teach this stuff and everything, but still, I met so many people here who inspired me to, to keep on the path and keep going, and it was just absolutely incredible experience. Alright you guys, this is the last day. Tears are shedding, but on a happier note, did you guys have fun? <laughs> we had 100,000 tomatoes, 20 bins of watermelon, and the fruit was sold out every single night. <laughs> if you're feeling stronger now than when you got here, raise your hand. Awesome. How many of you guys are gonna take what you learned here and bring it home with you to share with your family and friends? Okay. Every single person that came here, every one of us is a pioneer. So when you leave here, you need to talk to people. You need to tell them, not that you just had a good time, but that you experience a different way of life that isn't just some fringe, unusual diet that a couple people follow. It's the future. Next year, we're gonna shoot for 700 people back here, and we're gonna keep it going, man. All right? So rock on, fight the good fight, and we'll see you in 2013. I oh, someday I wish upon a star, wake up with the clouds are far behind. Me will travel melts like a lemon drops high above the chimney top that's where.